Hi guys, and first of all I want to apologise for the delay in uploading a video to my channel. I did say I was going to try and stick to a monthly uploading schedule, but as it's turned out, that's not the case. I will be obviously uploading videos in future, but I'm not going to say um, when that will be, as at the moment I really don't have much time to uh, spend on YouTube. But I do want to thank each and every one of my uh, subscribers for sticking around and supporting my channel. And for all those awesome uh, personal messages I've had over the uh, uh, last few months, um, I've been able to uh, reply to some and, and others. Just know that I appreciate uh, the, uh, the the kind messages. Uh, so uh, I also want to say a huge thank you uh, to a YouTuber called Michael who sent me some amazing Mass Effect comics. Uh, after watching one of my uh, older videos and uh, realising I was a huge fan of the Mass Effect universe so uh, I really enjoyed uh, reading those comics uh, it was really appreciated uh, Michael's also got his own wargaming website uh, where he's uh, actually uploads some of his beautifully painted miniatures and I really recommend you guys check it out it's called uh, Mordenheim PDX but I'll put a link in the description box below uh, so you guys can check that out and I really strongly recommend you uh, check out his work because uh, he really is a fantastic uh, painter I have to say a huge thank you also to all the YouTubers that posted a comment on my Badger Minitaire uh, overview video. I asked YouTubers to pick their favourite Space Marine chapter and the winning chapter was Dark Angels and I definitely looked out guys to be quite honest considering some of the really cruel and yes I do mean cruel uh, Space Marine chapters that was uh, posted as comments. Uh, one of them uh, was Howling Griffiths uh, I think I remember which is like a, a multi-toned uh, colour scheme so definitely happy with the uh, Dark Angels. I have gone for a slightly a lighter in tone uh, Dark Angels colour scheme than the standard GW as I feel that uh, it really uh, pops uh, with a slightly lighter uh, colour scheme and also I wanted to go for that really cartoony comic book uh, feel in this tutorial. So uh, grab yourself a nice hot cup of guys and uh, a nice a plate full of bickies and we'll get started. The Rhino is fully built here guys but it's not actually glued together. The reason I've showed you this is to illustrate how easy it is to work with a Rhino kit. So if you're actually fairly new to the hobby and you've been working on, you know, Space Marines and single miniatures, this kit is pretty much ideal as maybe your first big kit to work on. Also, it's very important as well not to fully build and glue the kit together if you intend to paint the inside of the tank, because to be honest guys, it's going to be near impossible to do that once you actually glue the Rhino all together. The parts have all been primed with Vallejo's polyurethane grey primer. I highly recommend these primers guys and they're a great alternative to your standard rattle cam primers that sometimes can prove troublesome. I'm adding some pre-shading to all the areas that are going to be on the inside of the tank. The colour scheme that I'm going for is to follow very closely to the look of the actual box art which I think is absolutely fantastic. I love the contrast with the dark angels of the green on the outside and the beige on the inside. What I'm doing is following around all the edges where there will be areas that will fall into really dark shadow you'll see how some of that shadow will get left behind as soon as I start adding in the beige colour afterwards. Doing more pre-shading around the insets of those panels there just to make them pop when I put the colour over the top of them. Don't worry too much if you actually go over some of the lines as well guys, especially on the inside of the tank because most of it will be hidden. If you notice here guys, I'm really hitting the bottom third of the uh, door there with that saddle, saddle brain, which after we add the next layer of paint is going to lead to a really nice cool transition. As I'm adding the pre-shade into the side walls of the tank, 
you'll notice that I'm constantly rotating the actual side of the tank. This is to actually use the natural angles of the tank to help me get into all the recessed areas of the tank. Anything that's going to help painting become more easy for you is a good thing. So just switching the angle of the tank just to get into those areas that seem difficult and make life much more easy. After finishing all the pre-shading, I go back in with a second layer of pre-shading in areas where I want some of the panels to pop a little bit more. I'm placing down the base colour now guys with Badger's Minotaur's Mummy colour. I really like this uh, colour, it goes down super smooth and it's got a cool name. <laughs> Not that that's important or anything, <laughs> but anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm actually covering most of that pre-shading, but I'm leaving some of it behind. As you can see, towards the bottom of the door where I'm holding it in my fingers, I do want some of that deep saddle brain to stay behind because it will leave a really cool effect. And as I'm painting the floor of the tank here, you'll see I'm doing the same. I'm working on the center area with the mummy color, but I'm trying not to cover too much of that saddle brand there. This is what all the panels look like once they've actually been finished with the mummy color. You can see some of that saddle brain showing through, but it's quite subtle on most of the panels. I did want to leave that cool transition effect on the bottom of the door there, and that turned out really well. But on the whole, I've edged on the side of making the pre-shading look quite subtle, but you can actually make it as deep as you like, guys. It's preference, really. using Vallejo's brand new range of model washes. These have been formulated to work very similar to oil washes and enamel washes, but without the hassle of using thinners and paint cleaners for your brushes and long drying times. And they work really well. As you can see on the palette there, it thins beautifully with just simple uh, water. And as you see it flowing over the panel line there, it glides effortlessly and it doesn't leave those telltale streaking and staining marks that you'll see with your normal acrylic so I think it's a fantastic alternative to actually working with uh, oils or enamels. The wash has been thinned down 50-50 with water and to actually create a wash and also at the same time I'm actually letting it stain the front surface of the all the panels just to break up the evenness of that base colour. Just some simple detailing work here guys. I've sped up some of this footage because uh, it could get quite boring watching me paint uh, the insides of these screens here. As you can see the Minotaur paints are meant for airbrushing but you can use them um, straight out of the bottle. You might need two or three coats but they still work fairly well. Just adding a bit of object source lighting. Now you'll probably find out why I don't wear gloves guys. I actually use my fingers as a mini little palette. If you actually notice there I was actually spraying some of the paint onto my nail there just to see that it was flowing okay before I hit it on the model. I don't advise you not to wear gloves guys it's just how I work and uh, as you can see I can get quite messy. You may have also noticed that I've actually swapped my airbrush over using those awesome quick releases I've switched over from the Patriot 105 to the Badger Chrome. Although the Patriot 105 can get fine detail it's much 
much more easier to do it with a Badger Chrome and as you can see I was able to get OSL done on a tiny little panel there. Here I'm actually going to be doing some streaking effects with the new washes and I think this is where they really excel. I think you can't really beat all washes and enamel washes for pin washing but when it comes to streaking there's not much of an advantage to using oils or enamel over this the way this new wash works. It's so simple to do as you'll see here. I'm placing down the wash pretty much neat and then what I'll do to draw out those streaks and to make them blend back into the surface of the model I'll just be adding water onto my brush and I'll be pulling them out. You can't really do this with traditional acrylics as they dry fairly quickly but on the way these new acrylics have been formulated as you can see I'm just adding water and I can still pull them down on the surface creating paint chips I find the easiest way to do this is creating a nice sharp point on your paintbrush and darting your hand in and out which helps to create some of the irregularities which you find occurring naturally in scratches. To achieve the metallic chips I mixed two different Blair Model Air metallic paints. I think these paints are absolutely fantastic but still I don't think they cover all the ranges of metallics. This is a shame as I find that the Vallejo Model Air metallics work better than most standard acrylic metallic paints. I used to love the old Games Workshop bolt gun metal but since I've replaced it with a new range of metallics I've got to be honest guys I find them really poor. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in part two.